another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin, and I have with me Jeff Squire from Cisco Systems and one of the devs of OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks hey, again. Brock. You may notice our uh, voice call is a little different this time, Jeff, because we're doing this on a phone instead of on Skype this time. And yeah, this, it, is a, this is a great experiment here. Uh, we're testing various different recording services for reasons that are completely uninteresting, and uh, Brock has the fantabulous fortune to be on a cell phone, so he sounds a little bit like he's on the other end of a tin can and string. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, as usual, uh, we have our website, rce-cast.com. On there, you can find uh, our Twitter links, uh, and you can you post who's going to be on there, and you can send us questions for things you'd like to hear about. There's also a nomination form, so if there's anything you'd like to hear on the show, please include that. Uh, Jeff, you also have a blog we link to off of that page. I do, and it's almost like we have to mention this every show, isn't it? <laughs> I, I have a blog on there. Um, I, I write random musings about MPI and various HPC topics and things like that. And we also get, uh, you know, via the social networking questions and comments for upcoming things, of which we've got a couple of questions this time for uh, our show today. And our show today is Brock. Uh, it is Lamps, a MD code from Sandia. And so we have one of the guys who works on that. And actually, I've been lurking on the lamps list for quite a while for stuff related to my job. And this guy, his ability to answer questions quickly and concisely is amazing. I don't know how he even manages to work on the code ever. But we have Steve Plimpton from, um, he's actually at Sandia. So, um, Steve, welcome to the show. And please tell us a little bit about yourself. Great. Thanks. Happy to be here. Uh, yeah, I've been at Sandia about uh, 20 years, I guess. Hard to believe. It's gone by fast. Uh, Sandia is a Department of Energy laboratory in New Mexico, and I came uh, from a computational modeling group, a physics uh, background here doing uh, simulations of solids and got involved in a parallel computing group. Uh, that was about the time 20 years ago parallel computing was just starting to take off for scientific simulations. And so over the years, I've uh, just been involved in a variety of uh, different algorithm and code development projects, uh, most of them around different kinds of particle simulations. And the one that's, I guess, consumed most of my time and energy has been this LAMPS project you mentioned. And so that's an open source code that we've uh, distributed for the last five years or so that's uh, uh, found some use and utility for different people and groups. And so we, we kind of support it and interact with those people in a collaborative sense. So, uh, so we're here to talk specifically uh, about LAMPS, but we actually had a question from a, a pretty heavy user of LAMPS. Carolyn asked, uh, how did you get started in high-performance computing? You, you said that uh, you kind of ended up at Sandia. Um, how did you end up explicitly on LAMPS? Um, yeah, so the group here at Sandia initially was just looking to explore parallel computing as a way to do a new kind of high-performance computing for a variety of science simulations. And the background I had in doing some molecular dynamics in graduate school was kind of my entry into to looking at parallel algorithms for doing MD. Um, that kind of led initially to some collaborative work with some companies in the mid-90s that were supportive of that effort. That's where the initial version of LAMPS uh, was created in Fortran. Uh, I guess that's been 15 years ago. And so over time, we did that kind of initially was a proprietary project with those companies to develop the initial version, and then we moved it to open source and rewrote it in C++ about five or six years ago and have kind of just gone on from there. Okay. So LAMPS, it's an MD code, but MD can mean a lot of things. Um, you know, what, Can you describe exactly what LAMPS focuses in? Sure. So more specifically, it's a classical MD code, which would differentiate it from, say, quantum-based codes or, or other, other kinds of molecular dynamics. Um, uh, classical means that it just uses simple empirical formulas, so it's kind of a coarser model, say, than a quantum code. Uh, LAMPS, more generally, you can think of it as just kind of a Newton solver or a time integrator for a collection of particles. And so the particles can be at an atomic scale, they can be actual atoms or more coarse-grained, you know, pieces of molecules or molecules themselves. So that's kind of the traditional classical MD 
code, uh, but more generally they could be mesoscopic particles or even ma macroscopic particles, little granular uh, particles or even pieces of a continuum model. So you can, there are uh, interaction potentials and boundary conditions and options in LAMPS to sort of simulate particles at a lot of different length and time scales. Uh, one thing, for those who, who didn't catch it, we've been saying MD quite a bit here. MD refers to molecular dynamics, right, Steve? Yes. Okay, good. Just, just to make sure we're all on the same level field here. Um, but you, you mentioned a, a couple years ago you rewrote LAMPS in, in C++. What, uh, what prompted that? Why did you guys do that? Um, well, the Fortran, initial Fortran version we'd probably had eight to ten years of effort into, and what we found is that as you, you – use your, your molecular dynamics code, your MD code on a new project. You typically have a new model. Maybe you need new properties with your atoms, new boundary conditions, new force fields. Uh, and as, as we kind of reworked that loop many times, the, code, the old code got kind of crufty and difficult to work with, and we realized we needed a more general sort of code framework that allowed you flexibility to add things easily. And so uh, that was kind of the motivation for rewriting the code, and we thought, C++ had matured enough on high-end parallel computing platforms that the compilers were good. Uh, the performance, if you wrote more C-like, C++ was basically equivalent to Fortran, and so we thought it was a good time to try to make a more flexible general code. The flexibility of the input format for LAMPS is one reason a group that I know that uses it um, chose to use LAMPS was one of the many reasons. What's been the speed of adding new methods and new features that they've been appearing in LAMPS. Okay, yeah, so f f when I was talking about flexibility, I wasn't focusing so much on the input options, uh, but more on, more on I think, the latter part of your question, the ability to add new methods or new features to the code with relatively low overhead and do it in a way that sort of doesn't conflict with the features that are already there. And so that was one of the design uh, goals we had with the new C++ version, and in, and in hindsight, um, I, don't, I don't think we had any great vision necessarily, but in hindsight, you know, giving that flexibility and allowing things to be added fairly easily was probably the best feature we put in the, in the new version of the code, because that has enabled a lot of, not just ourselves, but other people who've wanted to either contribute code that ends up making it into the main release or just modify it for their own purposes and use it internally. I know a lot of people do that. It has made it relatively a relatively low barrier for people to do that, and so I think that is one thing that people like about the code. So, how much of a community have you built up around LAMP? So, you know, user random user contributions are are kind of important. Are you, you know, how does how does it work? Are you the core developers there at Sandia, and you get random other stuff, or have you uh, evolved and gotten some other core developers outside of Sandia, or you know, how does your community generally work? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's it's pretty informal and grassroots. Uh, certainly the core group of developers that have been with the code from the beginning are here at Sandia, a small group of us. Uh, there are several active people who we've kind of just met through, you know, mail lists and other email interactions that have contributed significant pieces to the code. Um, the The community around LAMPS, I think, has mainly just been built through the mail list and through you know, people sending things in to us that we add. I'm sort of the gatekeeper. I wouldn't call it a truly open source project in the sense that, you know, there's just a, a zillion people who check into the main repository and the code kind of grows uh, randomly. I'm sort of the gatekeeper for that process in terms of checking things into the main version to kind of keep some consistency and make sure there aren't new bugs that get generated accidentally. But uh, there has been a lot of stuff that has just come out of the blue that we've you know, massaged a bit and added to the main code. And like I said, I think other people just kind of do that on their own and are able to keep up with the main branch with their own uh, private things they've modified and added. So extending it to the community outside, just specifically LAMPS, there's a lot of MD codes out there. You know, we've had Gromax on the show and Humdi uh, mm -hmm. by Josh Anderson, which actually draws a lot of its influence from the LAMPS. What really distinguishes LAMPS from these other codes and what is your relationship with other MD projects out there? Hmm, that's a good question. So, uh, yeah, there certainly are a lot of MD 